Welcome to Road to Recovery Webinar 1. In this Law Society webinar, Mary Clunan and Justin Purcell address business planning for practice development. Very welcome to the to the call. What we're calling now Road to Recovery Webinar Number One. So we we feel like we're moving a little bit out of the crisis mode, um, or to, and we're um, moving into so sort of the road to recovery. So the purpose of this seminar and the next two, we're joined here by Mary Coon, who I'm delighted to have from uh, Marketing Clever, is to put together a, a strategy where a small practice can, as as we've just been discussing, things are going to be getting more competitive, probably going down the line, more competitive for customers and clients, etc. So how do I put together a business plan for practice development? And over the next three seminars, we're going to discuss today uh, a little bit around business planning and practice development, what, what the, the sort of the, the, the theory behind it and what actions we might take. And then in the next two, we're going to discuss uh, marketing your practice and uh, your digital footprint post-development. So that hopefully that will lead to today thinking about what, what actions I need to take, and then over the next two, how do I actually execute on that? And uh, I think the big question a lot of uh, practitioners out there will say, well, like, uh, I don't, how do I approach this? What, how can I do? I'm busy with my clients and such. How, how can I focus on this area, which is everybody I think need, knows that they need to focus on this. I mean, business development uh, is the very essence of, of trying to get new clients, which is cash flow for the business. So how, how do we go about this? So. I'm delighted to have uh, Mary on the call today and for the next two. Uh, I'm uh, delighted to have everybody on the call as well. So if you have any queries at all, please uh, shoot them up on the um, on the webinar chat and we'll be happy to deal with them as we go along. So, so Mary, Thanks. Thanks over to you. Thank you very much. So it's great to be here. And I suppose today what we really want to do is create kind of a practical um, living document for you that we will use within our own practices to focus on building and kind of rebuilding to a great degree. So that's really what our business plan is here today. And this was what I'll run through and you can see this screen there in front of you. So I'll run down through the various different points. And I suppose I'm, I'm leveraging off kind of the expertise and experience I've kind of built up over the years with various professional services firms here and abroad so it's really a living document for you to use and what i would always say when we're starting this process is just to stand back and stand still to really think about what you want for your practice what you want for your firm and this really this business plan has to be core to your practice strategy and the development of that plan of your of your practice so it's really to kind of stand still and think about that from for it kind of quite deeply and I suppose like all things when we're starting a business plan, this isn't for your, 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 your bank or anything along those lines. You can chat to your accountant about that. But this is really around kind of practical steps you can do within your own practice with a view of rebuilding and recovering to a great degree. However, so, just Mary, can I just make a point there? On, on, I know it's not a plan for the bank, but the bank, when you go to get a loan from them, the first thing they're going to look at is a, a business plan of sorts. But really, the first question is the repayability. So your ability to demonstrate that you, you can repay the monies that you're going to borrow. And so if you have a very established business development, business plan, sales pipeline uh, that you're able to pull out of your pocket and say, listen, this is what I'm working on to get, uh, build relationships and get customers, there's a, a much higher likelihood they're going to give you a loan. So, so they, they, they're, they're not uh, totally diverged from each other. They, they can be mixed. Or, or they're their essential plank or pillar of, of getting a loan. Perfect. Perfect, Justin. So, so when we're starting this process, I always say to clients, stand back and we'll, we'll stand still. And we think about who our target audience is and what, who our ideal target audience is and what tactics we can employ to engage with that target audience to build your profile. Because it goes back to kind of the old saying around people doing business with people. They know and they like and they trust. So it's to build those factors, to build out your profile, to really think about how to do this effectively, what will work best for you as an individual and your practice with your resources in place. So just, we might move on to the next slide there. Yeah. And we will, great stuff. So I suppose really I would say to you, think about your target audience. And there's constant um, um, feedback from the States in the last year in particular, which has talked about the emergence of sectors and specializations in the marketplace. And there's one piece of essential reading I will, I will share with everybody called Hinge Marketing. It's an agency in the US that's focused exclusively on professional services, B2B firms. So it's well worth having a look at Hinge. There's some great online guides there available. So one of the key messages I would say to you when you're thinking about your target audience is think about who they are. And one of the most important factors in this is think about who, what clients do you like working with? 
and who do you like working with in because again if you're if you pick the kind of the core core persona of a target audience of an individual that you like working with it will certainly be easier and when you look at your target audience overall most firms have a mix of clients in various different shapes and sizes and forms and what i would say to you is try and segment them in some way because there's certain there's, there's vast amounts of research research to share to show with that the more segmented your target audience is, the more personalized and more distinct your message is for that particular audience. So we talk about going narrow and going deep to a particular target audience. So when you have a very distinct view of a particular target audience in mind, your message to that audience can be quite clear and quite, not necessarily simple, but very, very specific to that group. So I often get a question around this and I'm worried about focusing exclusively on a particular target area. I'm worried that I will exclude others. But certainly in my experience and the experience that we're seeing both in the US and the UK as well, that that's actually not the case. And I'll give you myself as an example. I would focus kind of really exclusively on the legal and, and accounting sectors. That's the area that I focus on. That's the area that I like working with. Um, but that's not to say that I don't get calls from management consultants and various other B2B firm software companies etc cetera, etc cetera. because i think when you have focus on a particular target audience your message to that area is very loud and sometimes when you're trying to give a message to everybody the message can be, become quite vanilla that nobody actually hears it so so, so mary there's a good question there so how do i find a target audience that i that i could work with if i'm doing just general uh, legal, legal practice issues at the moment or dealing with you know yeah, conveyancing or wills like so how do i find an area that differentiates me yeah, well, what I would say to you is think about the client that you like working with the most. That's really kind of the most important thing and make sure there's potential within that. You can go a couple of different directions with this to build your expertise out. And really what we're trying to be here is we're trying to be very efficient about building expertise and profile out to market in terms of, the, of developing a, a plan for your practice. So I would say to you, think about your service lines and think about potential sectors that you like working with and build a persona for, for each of those particular areas. You don't have to just pick one, but I discourage you from building 10 for, to be perfect, it's direct. I would say start with one and build as well. So if we pop onto the next slide, we'll just. So just a question on that. Sorry, sorry, Mary. If I want to build a persona, like what were the steps that I would take? Like just. But what that's... I would say to you is when you're building yeah. a persona, what, what I would say to you is think about your ideal target audience. Think about where they are, what they do, what are the issues that they will become challenged by from time to time. So we were to say, if I was to say, for instance, my ideal target audience is a dentist. I like working with dentists. I know a lot about dentists or I know something about dentists and I believe there's potential within the area. What I'd say to you is think about the issues that they have at the moment. So they have issues around protective equipment, coming back to work, all of that kind of good stuff. The dental industry is changing, particularly in Ireland. We can look at other markets and see what has happened there with regard to emerging trends for dentistry there. The lovely thing about a sector, an industry sector, a group like that, is if you have an association that that um, your ideal target market sits within, it gives you an opportunity to reach into that association. So for instance, the Dental Association, there's a various number of different magazines that are targeting the dental sector already. So it's really trying to create an opportunity for you to stand back and look and say, how can I reach this guy or girl? How, where are they, what are they reading? What are the groups they're going to? What events are they going to? What events that are now online are they going to? And it's to really kind of think quite deeply about that. But as you said already, Justin, there definitely has to be potential within it. But I would say to you, build a persona that's very distinct for them. And what I would say to you also is, you don't just have to pick the one, but start with one and do it really, really well, because you learn as you go through the process, what works best for you. And we're picking kind of, we're talking about an example I quoted there is a sectoral one. It doesn't have to be just a sector. We might, if we can pop onto the next slide, We'll just talk about kind of the, the various different groups that you can go after. So we think of carefully and deeply about our client issues. So there's two kind of, I, as I see in professional services and what's emerging, there's two kind of distinct ways to approach this. Think about the services that are appropriate for your kind of ideal target audience. What are they? And think about the sectors. So I would say to pick one, and it doesn't have to be a sector. It can be a service either. In my experience, service, sorry, sectors, there is experts, we all know experts that are kind of small practices that are on the news regularly. So you'd be surprised at how simple that is. Ireland is a small place. So you can build out, build out an expertise quite efficiently um, in the marketplace. And it's, again, no coincidence that larger firms and smaller firms are all looking at this because it's an efficient way to get to market. 
So if we kind of develop on our thoughts around the example we touched on earlier on about dentists, if we think about what the issues are for them and what the nice thing about kind of services, sorry, the sectoral approach, it allows you layer in your services underneath that. So again, there could be transactions opportunity in the dental area. There'll be an employment law issues that'll come up with health and safety. There'll always be tax planning, all of that kind of good stuff. So it certainly gives you an opportunity if you kind of feel you're a GP practice with a number of services offering. Focusing on a particular area is, is really worth trying. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a huge success in the marketplace from small firms really getting focused on these areas. And I suppose you have to ask yourself, do I have connections where I'm looking, if it's an association or a sector, to find my way to navigate in more than to get to, to, to help them with their webinars potentially, to provide some articles for the magazines, and to do some kind of writing yourself. What insight can you bring to it? Can we move on to the next slide? Um, Justin, we can talk a little bit about proposition. So what I would say to you kind of constantly, and my little graphic at the bottom kind of speaks, speaks to it all, it's really it's to constantly ask yourself, wait, but why? Why me? Why, why, why? So what I would say to you is when you're thinking about your target audience, build a clear proposition for them. People do business with people that they know and they like and they trust. So what you want to do is you want to demonstrate your understanding of the sector, your, under, your knowledge, and I suppose really, really importantly, your empathy for the sector. And that's something that kind of, I, I would see that kind of from a professional services perspective, we can forget at times. But it's really, and particularly now when it's been very challenging for a number of businesses, that empathy is going to be really, really important. So what I'm saying to you when you're thinking about a particular target area, it's to kind of build that evidence of your competency um, there. And like that can be done through client testimonials, logos of business that you've worked with, evidence of that, both on your, social, on, your, on your website, of course. And you can also use them through social media. Other evidence of your competency is in terms of, if you, are, if you do get the opportunity to, do, uh, uh, to write an article for some for the associations or to speak at an event, or even just to go along to an event, to make a little bit of noise about the fact that you're doing that, to kind of create some content out of that. And that moves me on to the next point. When we are creating content focused on our target audience, we're demonstrating an understanding of the issues of the target audience. And that's really important because again, if you think about it, if I'm looking for a um, solicitor who works with dentists or something along those lines, the first place I'm going to go is Google. And in later webinars, we're going to talk about the importance of your digital footprint now more so than ever. But content is really important to you. It gives you an opportunity to demonstrate your understanding of the issues of the target audience and, to, and in a number of different ways. It doesn't have to be just a once-off piece. You can look, rely on other opportunities that there are around kind of Google News alerts, keep an eye on the news, what's happening, what's happening in that area, in other markets that you feel you could leverage from. And there's always kind of a couple of areas you can think about. You can always think about kind of literally the return to work now for all businesses and what has the impact been. You can think about technology and what they're using and what could can they use and what is the ramifications or issues around that. And finally there, he's bringing some insight, kind of research and benchmarking. And I often hear that like, there's a worry that this isn't for me. I'm too small of a practice to do kind of research and benchmarking. And myself and Justin were chatting before we kind of started going to the, the webinar uh, formally. But I, I definitely see the use of research and it doesn't necessarily need to be your own research once you reference it. There's a lot of statistics. We're all glued to the news for the last, I don't know how many months now with the various statistics that are out there. But there is numbers and numbers are really interesting that could be available within your practice or you could see within the marketplace that you could put some kind of commentary around to bring it to life for your target audience. So it's worth thinking about. Um, is that okay, Justin? We might move yeah, on. Yeah, that's, to... that's great. We'll move on to the next one then. Uh, yeah. So uh, I suppose one question, and uh, I'm yeah. trying to avoid asking too many questions to break up the okay. flow, was um, yeah, like to avoid, it's a sort of vanilla positioning where you're, you're all things to everything and, and just, yeah. you know, uh, I think what you're talking about here about your clear proposition is, is kind of uh, really important. Yeah, and definitely. And like I often, people worry, I, I see firms and they worry hugely about what they write and what they put out into the marketplace. And they're really worried that um, that will exclude another uh, reader 
that could be their, their client as well. When I say focus on the target audience, it's not for, to be mutually exclusive to that particular target audience. What we're doing here is we're trying to really focus on an area that will allow you to develop your thinking around building your profile out to market and building your practices profile out to market. And it's all about the firm as to how you can position yourself. But look, if another piece of work come in the door, of course you're going to talk to them. And you're, but it's really around making clear around, it's to help you communicate to the market and to allow yourself kind of some guidelines to do that to really get focused on. And you're right, Justin, it's really important to avoid the vanilla. You really, you really need to avoid that because nobody's going to read it. I heard I think, some research recently and um, it was literally saying that the businesses particularly have to see a message nine times before it actually penetrates and engages with them. And when you think about kind of the amount of messages we put out to market, um, like that seems like an awful lot. And it was seven, I think last year, but the world is busy. We're getting constantly bombarded by communications in various different forms, from digital to news, from one thing and the other. So it's really important that we kind of stay consistent with a message that we have. We're putting it out to marketplace because it is really challenging to get heard out there. So it's really to create a mechanism so you can get heard as, as much as possible. I think that's a really interesting point. I think it's like, you just push it out, a message out once or twice and don't get a response. You could get a bit dejected. Yeah. Really, the reality is perseverance that it needs to go out at least uh, eight or nine times. Oh, it really uh, is. We're also busy. And your target audience are busier now than ever, particularly with the challenges we've all had. So it's really, really important to do that. So we'll move on to the next slide, if this will. So here, um, when we're talking about kind of actively targeting the market based on kind of the strategy you've decided, the target audience you've focused on, I will call these the five signs of life. So the, the, here's the five areas that I would encourage um, you to think about in terms of targeting a particular target area. So whether it's a sector or a service, obviously we'd have to have good, clear proposition on your website. Um, and that's really, really important. And like you can do that in a couple of different ways. It's really important to write for your target audience when you're writing your content on the website. And the style of websites has changed over the last number of years. So thankfully, there's less text needed now than there used to be. But it's to be clever to make sure that if somebody is searching in the area and can find you. And, you know, there's definitely potential to investigate kind of search engine optimization for your website in this particular area when you have a clear target audience. And there's lots of ways of doing that cleverly. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on other webinars when we're more focused on digital um, at, those, at that particular time. I was really thinking about thought leadership and think about the issues that are associated with your particular target audience and what is happening for them. What is happening in terms of the marketplace now? Has there been trends that have developed kind of year on year? And I mentioned earlier on Google News Alerts. It's a really handy little tool. You can pop into Google News, create an alert for something for your target audience is like, to put a descriptor of your target audience in there. So if it was Dentists Ireland, you can get an email as it happens, as the news breaks um, for dentists in Ireland, so you'll be you'll get the information as quick as anybody gets it. So it's a really handy way of kind of staying on top and looking on top of your game for that. We touched on benchmarks and surveys earlier on. I was sharing with Justin yesterday, and um, I did some work with the professional service firm a number of years ago, who had a huge number of credit unions within their portfolio, but had never actually conducted any research or benchmark. And I was saying, like, why don't we do some serve, do a survey for this area? They weren't really comfortable to do a survey. They were afraid they wouldn't get responses. I said, well, look, we'll start by doing a benchmarking survey. So even simple crunching of data around the key figures and the key metrics that matter to the credit union sector, which were very available in, when, for my client. All done anonymously, of course, but just to talk about the highs and lows of the sector. And it's, it's quite a simple exercise. Um, and even if you didn't have the time to do it yourself, I think you'll find that the marketplace will have kind of resources available and to kind of do that kind of thing now more so than ever. So I definitely think it's very accessible. SurveyMonkey is a fabulous little tool that you can use to do quick polls and surveys. And I use them all the time with a number of different clients. Really simple to use. And if I can use them, anybody can use them. So very, very straightforward. Um, events, of course, you know, events are, are, are this now. Events are webinars now at this particular moment in time. But they will return to being events at some stage again. Um, and I suppose it's really important for you to think about if you're targeting a particular area, um, how 
and how, in what ways can you use events, whether it's to go into network, just to build connections in the area. And that's really important too, particularly if you're targeting a particular kind of service or sector area, is to make sure that you're going to events, you're learning about what are the issues for your target audience. And then, of course, that can turn into content for your website, for your social media posts later on. Um, I often think it's important to, if it's a, an event that you have an opportunity to speak at or interact at in some way, is to say you're going get some pictures and snaps at it and say you went. And it's really what you're trying to do here on an ongoing basis is create content to allow you wave the flag for your target audience to say, don't forget me. To build yourself out as the top of mind option for that particular area. So Mary, I know we're going to talk about this going forward, but what, what are the main routes that you use to build your profile? So is it on your website? Is it via blogs? Is it LinkedIn, etc.? All of the above, absolutely all of the above. And I suppose what I'd say to you as well is like I do see clients that are kind of uncomfortable with kind of social media and not quite sure what to do and uncomfortable with um, digital uh, presence overall. And what I would say to you guys is the world is really turning. If it's not like particularly at the moment when we are confined to looking at screens, even to see each other at the moment, it's all happening online. So it, it's really important to think about how, how if you're not communicating online at the moment, I don't know how you are communicating, to be perfectly honest. It's a really, really challenging time. So websites are critically important. Social media is really important. To me, uh, LinkedIn is very important. Um, but I suppose everybody, I, I see practitioners using Facebook really effectively as well. And they're building communities on Facebook. Some clients are using um, Instagram. It's not for me, but look, in fairness, I would say to you, think what works best for you. What I, the other thing I'd say to you is think about what you have the appetite to do. And maybe start with one or two because there's no point setting up 10 different social media accounts and then neglecting them. So I would say start with your website. Google mapping um, is really important as well. Go it, most of you probably have your business mapped into Google to say where you're located. It's very important to utilize your Google mapping profile. And it's the thing that lots of people can, most businesses, to be honest, forget about it. Google automatically marked nearly everybody's business as closed during the pandemic. So it's very important to log into your Google mapping to make sure that your business is not marked as closed because again if i'm deciding to make an appointment with you i want to check if you're open and you know make sure that all the signals on all the various different platforms that you can reach are marked as open and ready for questions and queries just we might on this one just to kind of yes. keep Keep us keep moving. I think, I think we're, we're moving towards the end now. I think we're at, the, at, at nearly 25 past. So I, I do want to allow some time for questions. So if anyone out there wants to shoot them up. Yeah. No, no, I don't think you need to go too quick, but uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, suppose I think it's been invaluable what we've heard. So. Oh, good. I'm, gonna, I'm delighted. One of the key things I would say to you guys, though, is when you're, when you're talking about market development or business development or business planning or anything like that, in fairness, it can seem kind of a, a document that's created and left over on the shelf and forgotten about and gathers dust and nothing is happening with it. So when I, when I said at the early slide, I was saying this has to be a living and breathing document. This has to be something that you go back and go, actually, now that I think about it, I don't want to target dentists. I want to target doctors instead or whatever it is. You're, you're, um, you will discover um, and uh, as you go through the journey, different things as you go through that journey. And it's really important to monitor and capture that in some way. So what I would say to you is capture, even if it's a one line or one word in some way, your activity that you're focusing out there on the marketplace. Really, really important to do that. Because again, it will remind you how quickly, how engaged you are with a particular area. As you move through the process, you'll develop a pipeline. I've no doubt about this. Once the key, the most important factor in this is being consistent and focused. So you will develop a pipeline out of it. So keep a list of them in some form. There's lots of great CRM tools out there. But you know what? An Excel spreadsheet will do when you're starting um, just to kind of keep track of things, but keep track of them in some way. And then, of course, you will see wins coming out of your activity as well over time. I will warn you that it's kind of a more of a marathon than a sprint just to manage expectations. But it is down to consistency and to focus on it. And it's very, very doable. A lot of kind of smaller practices, very, very focused on it. I see great success in the marketplace. So yeah. I would say to you, all very doable. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them, Justin. Yes, I, I was just going to ask a, a, a question there around the pipeline, or just to add to the pipeline, is yes. that all, all of the, 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 the sisters out there will already have had customers or clients that they would have dealt with before, and maybe now is a good time to go back and reach back to them or look at the, look at the cases and see, is there additional services or just to reach out, and, because you already have an existing relationship with them, so that might be a good, good place to start. 
a great place to start. And what the other thing I'd say is I've noticed it myself lately. I've had a couple of contacts from um, various different clients that have said, look, we're, we're uh, dusting off our marketing plan. We're trying to build our reviews. We're trying to build testimonials. We're really focused on kind of, you know, growing in the marketplace and, you know, could you help us with it? So I think you can ask and you'll, and you'll know who to ask yourself from who, who you work with. But it's amazing the different conversations you can have at the moment. And I suppose it has been a really challenging time for people. Uh, don't forget to kind of reach out and have conversations, particularly with your key clients. Really important to do that. And you're not selling, you're telling. You're just reaching out to them to see how they're doing and to make contact. And it, it, I think that's important to do it. Just And again, you'll know yourself as to who you should make the call to and who you shouldn't make the call to um, in terms of how it will be received. Sure. And, and a piece of research I was reading from the States there was saying that just to make contacts or build relationships with clients, not necessarily on the clock. So this, that, that's a nice way to reach out when you're just making an informal, how's it going, how, how could I help out, or is there any yeah. particular issues that you're, you're, you're dealing with? Because informally then people will, will, will uh, raise issues possibly. I suppose yeah. a, a query I, I, I got there uh, uh, was, why wouldn't I just employ some business development person to do this work for me? Surely I'm the, I'm the legal person, uh, I want to focus on that, and a business development person would be more specialised and, and take, the, take the pressure. Do you have any thoughts around that? Yeah, if only it was that simple. Um, in my experience, I've seen one or two firms um, employ a business development person, and I've seen that person morph into a relationship management person as time goes on. It's a really, I think in professional services, it's a very challenging role to have in professional services because people are engaging with you as an individual, as a professional. So having a sales person coming on to me to tell me how great you are, it's just, I think, culturally in Ireland as well, it's, it's slight discomfort with it, to be perfectly honest. I haven't seen it uh, work particularly well, but um, maybe it will. Um, I've seen it in the UK and I've seen it in the US, and they're very different culturally, very, very different markets to us. So I think, um, not yet, I think, I don't, I'm not sure the Irish uh, professional services market is ready for business developers, but uh, I, I, I'll stand corrected. Should I be? <laughs> yes, well, well, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough so, uh, one. Yeah. I, I, what I always think about professional services is people are engaging with you at a professional level and it's your expertise. And it's very hard for a business developer to kind of get across that purely, number one, because they're a business developer. So it has that sales uh, kind of smell off it. So I think it's far better off that it comes from the individual. And like, this is very doable. Like people are, it is very doable. Like, and if anybody's kind of really worried about it, there's plenty of training available kind of get you more if you're worried about kind of speaking at events or even not sure how to network at an event there is training available to kind of come over all of these hurdles i've seen lots of firms come over them and uh, it, it is doable and then it's just practice to be perfectly honest of getting out there and keeping focused so mary i'll just uh, point everybody to we're coming to the end of the call if any has any particular questions uh now's your time we've got a, a minute or so left so if you could just pop them up on, on the chat Mary, thanks a million for your really informed and, and uh, interesting chat today. I think it really sets the scene for everybody. I think if, if, if there was a bit of homework, everybody might take away would be what, what area of specialism would they like to like to develop or area to talk about, which sector or service do they think that they, they feel most comfortable with, it's just as a, as a think through, and maybe possibly look at their current uh, caseload or clients and see how could you reach out and maybe build a, a more of a relationship with them. So next week, we're going to look at, as part of webinar two, is marketing your practice post-COVID-19. Mary will be on the call with us again. And then following that, your digital footprint post-COVID-19. Um, so if anybody doesn't have any other questions, I'll just uh, flick up the last slide then, which is just the contact details. I think a few people there had, a, had one or two questions for you, Mary, directly. If they wanted to contact you directly, there's your, your contacts. We will share these uh, slides uh, later in the day with, with the audio from the call. Uh, so again, once again, thanks very much to Mary for a, a very informed uh, 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 webinar. And uh, unless there's any other questions that people have out there, uh, we'll, we'll close the call. So Mary, is there anything else you'd like to add? At, at, I, just, at this? I would just say to, to people, um, this is very doable. This building a plan to focus on your, your practice is very doable. We've kept it kind of very simple and focused here. 
you can you know you can really kind of put lots of layers on this and we've kept it simple and focused to make sure that it's you know people understand it and it's clear and and in fairness i really do feel sorry for professional services at times because you all have worked so hard to get to where you're at and sometimes market development and business planning can be neglected so i think it is very doable it's very achievable and uh, good luck to people getting focused out there stay consistent Okay, so thanks very much, uh, everybody, for joining the call. But we'll share share the slides, share the audio. If you have any queries, you can contact me at the Law Society. Uh, my email and phone number are there, uh, or you can contact Mary directly at Marketing Clever. So, Mary, many thanks for for joining us again. Thanks for your time, and to everyone for joining the call. Slán and take care. Thank you.